Orkut Sadikim, Chapter 2 on Modesty, Part 2. Modesty can be recognized in a man in six ways. Number one, when a man can restrain his anger, for example, when another shames him exceedingly by words or deeds and he is tempted to avenge the insult, but he controls his wrath and forgives the offender because of the Creator, blessed be he. That is a sign of modesty. There are times, however, when it is forbidden to forgive an offender, as in the case of a wise scholar whom someone shames in public. In that case, the offender should appease the scholar he has insulted. Number two. The second is when a man suffers a great loss, or his children die, and he declares his faith in the justice of God, blessed be he, and receives his judgment with love, as it is said, and Aaron was silent, Leviticus 10.3, and this certainly teaches what humble and modest conduct is. Number three, if a man should hear that everyone praises him because of his wisdom and his good deeds, he should not rejoice at this, but think that his good deeds are few compared to what he should do, and that they are nothing but a drop in the sea. And, of course, if people credit him with good deeds he did not do, he should not rejoice at this, but, on the contrary, feel great pain in his heart that he should have gotten credit for something he did not do. Also, in the case where somebody told evil tales concerning him, if these are true, he should not seek to twist the truth and thus clear himself, but do as Judah who said, she is more in the right than I, Genesis 30, 38, 26. And he should not try to contradict the man that told these tales, nor should he hate him because he revealed the matter, but he should bow humbly before the Creator, blessed be he, that he has revealed a little of much that could have been revealed in order to rebuke him and correct him that he might return to God. Now, if what the man told about him is false, he should not shame the accuser or quarrel angrily with him. There was one of the sages about whom a man spoke evil falsely. And when the pious sage learned of this, he sent the maligner a gift with this message inside. You sent me a gift out of your merits, and now I reward you with this gift, which I send you here with. For on the day of judgment, they will display before many people good deeds that they did not perform. And these people will say, but we did not perform these precepts. Then the court of heaven will answer them. Those people who spoke evil of you perform these good deeds, and we are taking them away from them and giving them to you. And in the same way, they will show evil deeds to the wicked, evil deeds that those wicked people did not do. And when the wicked protest, we did not commit these particularly wicked deeds, the heavenly court will answer, these sins were committed by those against whom you gossiped, and those sins have therefore been taken from them and added to yours. And this is the meaning of what is said, Render unto our neighbors who gossip against us sevenfold into the bosom of their reproach. Where would they have reproached thee, O Lord? Psalm seventy nine twelve. For anyone who reviles a righteous man, it is as though he reviles the Lord, blessed be he. For the enemies of Israel are called the enemies of God in many places. In connection with speaking against the righteous, the Torah has warned us, Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam on the journey. Deuteronomy 24.9 Thus, one who bears insult and is silent is recognized to be truly modest, and so have we found in Shabbat 31b concerning Hillel the prince, when a man insulted him and said, Let there not be many like you in Israel, that Hillel did not fly into a temper. And there is a statement in the Midrash, No one can be called modest unless he can hear himself reviled and not answer as if it is written. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, and it does not say that Moses responded. And following this, it is written, And the man Moses was exceedingly modest. And concerning these that are not worried about their own honor but love God, it is written in Judges 5.31, commented upon in Shabbat 88b, But they that love him be as the sun when he goes forth in his might. 
Our rabbis taught, those who are insulted but do not insult, hear themselves reviled without answering, act through love and rejoice in suffering. Number four, the fourth manifestation of true modesty is if the Creator, blessed be He, deals well with a man in giving him wealth and children, and also gives him great wisdom, understanding, and honor. That man should become even more modest and humble before the Creator, blessed be He, honor men, and do good to them more than before. As in the case of Abraham, when the Holy One, blessed be He, said to him, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, since Abraham is to become a great and populous nation? Genesis eighteen seventeen to 18 Abraham responded, And I am dust and ashes. Much of the wisdom and much of the wealth that we see multiplying in the hands of some people in this world come to them for one of three reasons. The first is as a goodness sent by the Holy One, blessed be He. The second is as a trial or temptation. The third is wealth acquired as an act of vengeance. The first reason, wealth and wisdom as the beneficence of God, can be evidenced by the fact that this rich man harms no man with his money, nor does the wise man use his wisdom to harm any man. And when this man with his wisdom and his, this man with his wealth and to the servant add to the service of the Holy One, blessed be he, in accordance with their interest, then you may be sure that this wealth and wisdom come from the Holy One, blessed be he. The sign of wealth or wisdom as temptation is that the possessor of the wealth is occupied with guarding his wealth and is constantly concerned about losing his money and does not enjoy his wealth to obtain power or to consume what it buys. The possessor does no harm to anyone with his wealth, does not boast of it, but bothers constantly to gather more wealth and worries about guarding it. He does not give alms and does not show pity to the poor. He does not feed them and does not clothe them. And so it is with the wise man who devotes most of his wisdom to temporary worldly matters, desires to fill the needs of the moment, but does not use his wisdom for an evil or good purpose. These are certainly trials. And the third is wealth acquired and held as an act of vengeance. And the sign of this is that the owner of the money harms others with his wealth and boasts of it, does not give charity, and is fully occupied with enjoying it as it is written, Behold joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep. Isaiah 22, 13. And he says further, And the harp and the psaltery, the tablet and the pipe, wine are in their feasts. Ebed 5.12, he does not pay of all his wealth that which is due to the Holy One, blessed be he. On this, it is said, riches kept by the owner thereof to his hurt, Ecclesiastes 5.12. And thus it is with the wise when he schemes to do evil deeds and not good deeds with his wisdom, as it is written, they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge, Jeremiah 4.22. Then his wisdom is a stumbling block to him. Therefore, the intelligent person will do with his wealth and his wisdom the good he can, according to the extent of his wealth and wisdom, and will add to his modesty and humility, and his heart will not grow haughty. He will always worry whether this wealth is not his sole reward. Such a person belongs to those who fear that their wealth may destroy them, and of whom it is said, but who instantly requits with a distraction those who reject him. Deuteronomy 7.10 The wise man, too, will worry whether he is among those of whom it is said, they are wise to do evil and do not know how to do good. Jeremiah 4.22 Every man is obligated to grow wiser and to understand more clearly and to continue to attain through his wisdom good deeds until his wisdom can achieve no more. Number five, the fifth way in which modesty could be recognized in a man is when he rebukes himself because of some evil he has done to someone through deeds or words. And although he has no need, whatever of the friendship of that man and never expects to receive some benefit from him, he nevertheless, voluntarily, without anyone urging him, goes to the person he has offended and asks his forgiveness, humbles himself before him, 
corrects what he has done wrong, and speaks words of supplication and pleading to him he has offended. This, too, is a sign of true modesty. Six, the sixth way is which true modesty can be recognized as if a man customarily speaks soft words that is said, soft answer turns away wrath. Proverbs 15.1 With a low voice, for this speaks of humility as it is said, you shall be humble and shall speak from the ground, and your speech shall be low out of the dust. Isaiah 29.4 And he should not occupy himself with the beauty of clothes and ornaments as is said, for he saves the humble-eyed person. Job 22.29 He should not occupy himself with the pursuit of pleasure as it is said, the righteous eats to satisfy his soul, Proverbs 13.25, and not more. All these are the signs of modesty. Modesty is a ladder by which one ascends to the way of the Holy One, blessed be he. As it is said, he guides the humble in justice, and he teaches the humble his way, Psalms 25.9. Through humility he attains the reverence of God, blessed be he. As it is said, the reward of humility is fear, Proverbs 22.4. Shekinah dwells on the humble, as it is said, I dwell with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit, Isaiah 57, 15. The Holy One, blessed be He, ignored all the high mountains and hills and inclined His Spirit to Mount Sinai, descended to this lowly mountain, and it is written, Awake and sing, you that dwell in the dust, for the dew is as the dew of light. Isaiah 26, 19. He that lives in the dust in his earthly life will live in the world to come. And it is written, For though the Lord be high, yet he regards the lowly. Psalm 138, 6. And who, he who makes his heart as nothing but flesh, his prayer will be heard, as it is written, All flesh will come to bow before me, said the Lord. Isaiah 66, 23. And it is written, O oh, thou that hearest prayer, unto thee does all flesh come. Psalm 53, 3. No, 63, 65, 3.